Welcome to episode two of the Business of Carpentry. Today's episode is going to be titled The Road to Self-Employment. I've recorded this three times now, and I just haven't liked how the recordings turned out. This time, I'm going to go through it, and it's going to be what it's going to be. I'm going to tell you my story to self-employment. There's a few things that I'm going to assume you have that I feel I personally have. The first one is I already had a base skill set in carpentry, DIY kind of things. That came from my dad who he was going to do the pro- he was going to solve the problem himself. We did all of our own auto repairs within reason. If it was something we couldn't do or we didn't have the specialized tools to do, of course we'd hire a professional. But we did all of our own auto repairs, we did all of our home maintenance, we painted, we stained decks, we built decks. We did everything you would need to do for kind of that base carpentry skill set. And then also I worked for a gentleman who was a friend of my dad's summers during high school doing carpentry, remodeling, those things. So that's where I really got the fundamental skill set that everything else is built on. So I'm assuming you have that too if you're listening to this. I might do another episode in the future of how to acquire those skills. The second thing is I learn by doing, and I am a self-motivated learner. That means if I need to learn a skill, then I will do the research necessary to learn that skill, whether it's finances, whether it's how to change the power window motor on my car. I'll do the research and figure out how to do it. And I'm willing, the third thing is I'm willing to try, I'm willing to fail, and I'm willing to ask for help. And I think those three things are very well suited for people who want to be self-employed. You have to be able to have kind of that base skill set to move forward with this or you're not going to succeed. Let's move up to the story to the year 2009. In the year 2009, I graduated college. I graduated with a degree in Christian ministry. My intention was to go into the ministry or work in a nonprofit sector. I worked in churches or nonprofits working with youth since before I graduated college and up until 2014. Once I graduated college, I started re-entered woodworking as a hobby, uh, mainly to make gifts because if you've ever worked in a nonprofit sector, you know that it's not a very lucrative field. So we're scratching by as Christmas is coming up. We need to get gifts for nieces, nephews, people. So it's like, well, um, let me just make some gifts for my family. Then I started making some deer blinds to sell out of scrap materials that I was able to acquire for free. And then I started doing occasional commission work and a little bit of handyman work on the side. Not a lot during this time, but those were the few things I've tried. Um, tried and failed. The deer blind business did not take off. I ended up, you know, it was like five bucks an hour for what I could sell the deer blinds for. Um, Maybe they weren't very good either. You never know. But during this time, it's one of those honing your skills. You do things, you learn from your mistakes, and you keep moving forward. 2012 is when things really shifted. We moved out to West Texas to take, for me to take a job out there. When we moved out there, my schedule was fairly flexible, so I started doing more handyman type work on the side. I helped um, a few old ladies in our church. Um, I'd mow their yards. I would um, fix window screens. I repainted the houses. Different things like that is what I would do. I also started my YouTube channel during this time. also opened an Etsy store to sell some crafts that I would make. Most of that unsuccessfully. Um, I upcycled and resold a lot of furniture. That was mainly because I enjoyed doing it. And I would make enough off of that to buy more tools and get the tools I needed to do more projects. And just honing those skills. So at this, by the time, I don't know, 2014 rolled around, I was probably making a few hundred dollars a month. Not anything to really write home about, but it was enough to be able to buy a new tool here and there. In 2015, I lost my job. 
Uh, the economy went south. There were some political issues that we're not going to go into, but lost my job. It turned out to be one of the best blessings in disguise that has ever happened. And I had been playing with the idea of going back into carpentry full-time. I had kind of gotten burned out, and I wanted something different. And I realized at this point I really liked working hands-on. I like doing, I like building, I like making things. Also happened to do an interview with the uh, host of the Work Strong America podcast, Rick Sigmund. I'll link to that podcast um, below. That podcast was actually released like a week after I got fired, actually. Um, it was recorded a few months earlier. So I lost my job. And I was fired on Wednesday. Cleaned out my office and felt sorry for myself Thursday. Friday, I started job hunting, applied for five or six different jobs I was qualified for. And then Monday rolled around, and I was sitting on my butt, not doing anything, feeling useless, you know, realizing that, hey, I've got a wife and a son to support, and the severance isn't going to last but another month, so I need to get busy and bring in some income, no matter what it is. So, I decided, I was like, well, I have this skill set. I know a lot of people in this town, so the printer had ink. I made up some very basic handyman flyers, also offering yard work. Um, if you're watching the video, I'm going to put a that flyer up there, just how it was. Um, very basic, very simple. And so I went door to door to people I knew and handed them a flyer, told them I was looking for any and all work. I would clean your gutters, I would mow your yard, I would clean up, take out trash, whatever you needed to do. I think that's another thing, if you're going to ever try to be self-employed, is you can't be too proud to work. Now that I'm more established, I don't do yard work anymore, just because I'd rather not. But I'm not above it. If things got slow enough where I needed work, and someone called me to mow a yard, I'd do it in a heartbeat. But right now, I've been blessed. But I'm not too proud to work, and I don't think you can be too proud to work and be self-employed. Because honest work is honest work, no matter what it is. Okay, soapbox on, let's get back to the points. Um, so Monday was there, I was feeling useless, made up a bunch of flyers, went door to door, started asking for work. Um, one of our, um, the older gentleman I knew, uh, he hired me to repaint his front door. So I cut him a deal, and I was repainting his front doors before I had a paint sprayer system, so I was just brushing it out there in the front yard. While I was waiting on the first coat to dry, I went door to door in his entire neighborhood and put up flyers on all the doors there. This was in November, or the end of October, November 2015. That afternoon, one of his neighbors walked up to me and said, hey, are you the guy who put this on my door? I said, yes, I am. And they were like, well, we're getting ready to sell our house, and we want the outside painted and the inside painted. Would you be interested in doing that? And I was like, of course, you know. I'd be happy to do that. Work is work. So we came up with a agreed on price. And I decided, well, the outside, you know, you should really spray an outside if you're going to do it in any kind of time-effective manner. All I had the money for was a cheap Wagner $150 uh, paint sprayer that just misted paint everywhere. Now that I have, you know, $700 worth of Graco sprayer equipment, I realize how horrid that sprayer was. But you know what? I made about 6000 bucks with that $150 sprayer, so... On several houses, not just this one person's house. So, you know, it paid for itself. Um, and then, I got lucky. It was really just a lot of blessings, knowing enough people to point me in the right direction. Kept me busy with little work. Um, and then I also, um, the owner of an HVAC company, went to church with us. And I called him up and told him, like, hey, I'm doing handyman carpentry kind of work. And, you know, if you ever... Put your foot through the ceiling of a house. Give me a call. I can come back to drywall. And his response was, well, you know what? I've got this 10,000 square foot warehouse. And I'm wanting to turn about the first thousand square foot of it in an office. And I've been framing it out in my spare time. But I just, I don't have time to finish it. I don't like doing drywall. I don't like painting. And if you want to come, you know, give me an estimate on what it's going to cost, then you can come, come do that for me. 
I'm kind of getting in a time crunch to get it done um, because my wife is going to come be my secretary. So come see what that is. And that honestly saved me. Uh, Total, I think he ended up paying me close to $10,000, not including materials. He paid for all the materials because I didn't have the capital at this time. Um, Very understanding, let me work with our crazy flexible schedule because my wife was also working we didn't have child care um so you know i'd work up there two, three or four days a week but i'd end up doing you know 12 13 hours at a time working you know till 10 or 11 o'clock just with the way our schedule was and he really worked with me on that and that was awesome so thank you zach um that allowed me to build my business built my skills um there was a lot of stuff, especially drywall, because it had been a long time since I did drywall, is I had to redo a lot of drywall texturing and coating and patching to get it to look right. And then I had to do a few things I'd never done before, like lay tile. Is just he, We couldn't find a tile guy, and so he had me. We teamed up on Saturdays, and we went up there and laid tile together, and we figured it out how to do it together. That's one of those things of not being afraid to learn. Watch a few YouTube videos and get in there and do it until you get it right. So that's kind of my road to self-employment. And everything changed in May of 2016 when we moved back home to the College Station area. And I started my business over from scratch. And I'll do that story later. But that's kind of my road to self-employment. Is I started working on the side, doing side jobs, handyman work, mowing yards. Lost my job, had to make money. And I thought, hey, I'll just do odd jobs until one of these five or six or seven jobs that I've applied for come through. Well, I'm still waiting on those jobs to come through almost a year later, and I'm not interested in those anymore. Um, I, I really didn't plan on this being full time until I realized, like, hey, I'm making enough money to actually support us doing what I really enjoy doing. So that's my story too of self-employment. Um, as far as advertising goes, well, let me back up just a second. When I started this, um, I actually had a business account already. I'll do another episode over finances later. But I went ahead and had a business account from earlier that year. Um, but yeah, I didn't worry about licensing, didn't worry about insurance, didn't worry about any of that legal crap that... They say you have to go through to be self-employed. I just got in there and got after it and started working. Um, I had a website mainly because of my YouTube channel. But you can have a free website. You can have a free uh, Google Plus page. You can have uh, Craigslist ads. You can have Facebook page. You can do ads on Facebook groups, forums. There's so much free advertising out there that I really was able to sustain myself for a long time with the one big job that I had just through a contact I had and then the little jobs that filled in all those gaps. Um, I'll talk another little bit about advertising later because I'm doing something a little bit different now. But yeah, so if you are looking for the road to self-employment in your life, as lame as that just sounded, um... The only way to do it is to to start doing it. If you've got spare time, start figuring out what you can do to try to make some extra money on the side. Um, You know what? Even if you don't make money out of it, you at least have content for your Facebook page, for your website, for your YouTube channel. That builds your portfolio. So whenever you do come across somebody who's like, well, yeah, I'd like to hire you, but what can you do? You're like, well, here's my website with all my work on it. Here's my Facebook page with, you know, these projects I've done. Here's pictures on my iPhone of work I've done. You know, this is what I'm capable of, and so this is what I can do for you. Um, That is a huge benefit because it's one thing. It's like, sure, yeah, I can build the deck versus, well, here's a deck I built for this customer. Here's another deck I built for this other customer. Um, Here's a name and number if you want references. Um, you know, just slowly build that up, and I've built a lot of things that I thought, it's like, hey, this is going to make money. Um, sign carving was one of those things I tried for a while, 
to do because it was supposedly quick and easy, but it was a pain in the butt. But I know how to carve a sign now, and that gave me more content, more skills. That's a skill I didn't have until I tried it. So try it, do it, um, figure out what you can do on the side to make some money. And then if ever you've got to dive in, don't be too proud to take a job that you really don't want to do. So if all you want to do is cabinet work, great. Um, I wish you the best. I hope you get to the point to where all you have to do and all you can't, all you need to do is cabinet work. But until you get to that point, don't be afraid to get out there, build a deck, hang a door, weed eat, mow some grass. I think that's kind of where you have to go to be self-employed. Is you got to start broad, and as you can, as you grow and your skill set grows, then you specialize to what you want to specialize in. All right, guys, that's 15 minutes and 51 seconds of rambling. I'm probably going to edit that down a little bit. But that is my road to self-employment. Very short story. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, um, feel free to leave it in the comment section. I'll do my best to reply. Um, and if it's a worthy enough question, um, maybe I'll do a episode specifically um, addressing that. Anyway, y'all have a good day. I wish you the best. Thanks for listening to the Business of Carpentry. And be sure to like and subscribe.